The PTS for Title Update 5 went live this morning and with it a whole host of new changes that really needed to be made to skill power which will be implemented and tested. With this video, I am trying to stay ahead of the curve by just a bit and get agents who have had absolutely no use for skill power or skill builds in the Division 2 up to speed on everything skill related. What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and ever since I listened to the division state of the game address on June 26th, I have been scrambling to source and confirm information for this video. You see, I am a huge fan of skill power builds and published quite a few original division game videos centered around this subject, including how it all worked, the builds themselves, and even speedruns where I showcased everything from my full tacticians build to my Captain America tack link shield build and even a full electronics alpha bridge build. My point being, I love skill power and how it really adds diversity to your plan of attack against all types of enemy targets. Now, for those of you that want to easily reference different sections of this video, please consult this timestamp and I will include the appropriate links in the video description below. So without wasting any further time, let's jump right into the upcoming changes for skill power in Title Update 5. Title Update 5 will essentially bring skill builds back out of the shadows and into the mainstream with the buffing of skill damage mods by nearly five times their current maximum values, according to Bruce Kelly, game designer at Massive. Say you have 3,000 skill power, for mm. instance, on live in TU4 right now. You could buff your turret. Uh, let me check my cheat sheet, which is a document made for ants. Um, <laughs> so the old turret uh, a skill mod that buffs the damage on a turret for instance mm -hmm. could go up to about 25 to 30 percent that's how much you can increase the base turret damage by um, now you can now that same mod if you've got 3,000 skill power will increase its damage by up to 150 percent if this is not making sense right now because you are used to the original division game mechanics for skill power and skill builds, let me quickly cover the differences between the Division 1, the Division 2 at launch, and how the Division 2 will supposedly change once Title Update 5 goes live. In the original Division game, you could invest into electronics as a main stat as well as skill power and skill haste as attributes on your gear. But for our discussion right now, skill haste doesn't really matter, as we will come back to it later. It was the electronics main stat and ultimately the overall skill power stat that predominantly determined how hard your skills were hitting in terms of raw damage. The higher your overall skill power numbers, the harder your sticky bomb, seeker mines, or turrets would hit enemy targets for. Other items like enemy armor damage and damage to elites could be obtained and used to augment your damage output through sources such as gear attribute rolls, weapon talents like destructive and ferocious, or through superior gear mods that featured damage to elites. Finally, performance mods could be added to your build that would add up to 4% additional skill damage to the mod you selected with a maximum of 4 of these mods which could be equipped at any given time. As a quick example, if you were going for a maximum damage on your Sticky Bomb build, you could equip 4 of these 4% damage mods that would add 16% damage when you landed a hit with your Sticky Bomb. Now I know this is the abridged version, but just remember that in the division, the bulk of your skill damage and area of effect, or AOE, was influenced by how much skill power you had on your build, was augmented by gear attributes and weapon talents that added enemy armor damage and damage to elites, and then topped off by specific skill damage mods that were added to gear pieces as performance mods. In addition, for a little extra oomph on your build, you could select player talents such as Chain Reaction or Demolition Expert for a chance to add additional explosive damage should these talents proc. Quickly switching this explanation back to Skill Haste, and it could be obtained through gear such as the Tactician's 2-piece bonus, 
weapon talents like determined and cool headed on gear mods at a maximum roll of 3% and on the body armor, gloves and holster gear pieces as attribute rolls. Skill haste could be added directly to your build through attribute rolls on gear, gear set bonuses and through weapon talents. And for those of you that are not familiar with the term skill haste, it was the percentage factor that determined how quickly an agent could get their skills up and active after using them after going through a cooldown phase. Let's just say that if built properly, an agent can deal immense amounts of offensive damage to either a single target or group of targets using nothing but their skills, and then get those skills through their cooldown phases and back to active status in very short time periods. So now that you've had a crash course in how skill power worked in the original Division game, let's take a brief look at how it was introduced into the Division 2 at launch. First off, electronics was removed as a main stat, with skill power remaining as a gear attribute. Secondly, cooldown reduction was added to our gear as an attribute, and this is the skill cooldown percentage factor that replaced skill haste from the original game. Showing now on your screens are the current maximum rolls for the live game, title update 4, for skill power and cooldown reductions that can be obtained on each type of gear piece as attribute rolls. These do not include the individual static bonuses that you can get for skill power and cooldown reductions through the brand set bonuses, such as on the China Light 3-piece, Petrov Defense 3-piece, Alps Summit 1 and 2-piece, and Providence Defense 1-piece bonuses, or through the gear set bonuses like the Hardwired and Tip of the Spear gear sets. Just like in the original Division game, certain talents could be added to your skill build to reduce cooldown timers and skill power numbers, but where the Division 2 broke from the norm that agents were used to in the original game was how skill power and skill mods were implemented, equipped, and how they were connected in terms of skill damage. In the Division 2, an agent's skill power number, seen here, has no bearing on how hard their skills are hitting or inflicting damage on an enemy target. An agent could have 2,000 skill power or 3,000 skill power and their secret mines or other skills would produce the exact same damage output numbers in either scenario. This is due to the fact that skill power does not determine skill strength in the Division 2, but rather it is used as a benchmark for activating skill mods. It is these skill mods that determine how strong the effects of a skill are activating for, and skill power is used as a level requirement for activation. For example, if I have a specific Seeker Mind mod that requires 2.4k skill power and I really want to equip and use this mod, I will need to somehow find a way of stacking a minimum of 2.4k skill power onto my build or this mod will be rendered useless for loadout. So through the accumulation of skill power on your gear pieces, gear talents like Empowered or Utility Electronics mods, through the specific 15% static skill bonuses on most of the brand set 3 piece bonuses and even skill specific mods that award that specific skill a small skill power bonus towards an unlock, an agent will need to find enough skill power to activate the equipped mods. As you can see, I have many different mods that seem to offer the same results but require wildly differing amounts of skill power in order to unlock, and it will come down to savvy inventory management and comparisons in order to keep the correct mods. So now that we've had a quick rundown of how skill power was changed from the Division to the Division 2, let's now look at how Title Update 5 has turned the meta on its head and changed every agent's perception of the importance of skill power. With the announcement of the skill power rework that has begun testing today in the Title Update 5 PTS, everything has remained largely the same in terms of how skill power functions for unlocking the individual mods. However, it is the strength of the individual mods that have been increased on a monumental scale, and this is what we need to discuss. 
First up, and we saw this in the State of the Game stream, is that cooldown reduction will no longer exist and will permanently be replaced by skill haste. Now, here is where I've been able to source some additional information concerning skill haste going forward into TU5. First up, skill haste will have no hard cap, although it will show diminishing returns the higher levels you achieve through mods and attributes. Secondly, and this was due to a misunderstanding by the live team for the state of the game address, is the fact that skill haste will not, I repeat, not scale with skill power. Third, is that skill haste will be available on skill mods in large amounts, and depending on your agent's overall amount of skill power, you will be able to source and equip these high percentage skill haste mods to your agent loadout. Fourth, all previous cooldown reduction percentages will receive a 50%, I repeat, a 50% bonus when they are now converted into skill haste. So, if you had a max cooldown reduction roll on your high-end backpack of 30%, once you enter the Title Update 5 PTS, it will show as a 45% skill haste roll. Fifth, the skill power gear talent surge will move from a 10% cooldown reduction to a 20% skill haste percentage. And finally, just for a base reference, a typical skill haste mod will grant anywhere from 50 to 150% skill haste, depending on your agent's skill power and the ability to equip and unlock that mod. Now that is a lot of new and breaking information concerning the rework of cooldown reductions into skill haste along with all the new percentages and I hope you find it extremely helpful. Next, let's talk about some of the changes that were shown on the state of the game concerning skill damage and this is where agents will see the largest gains in terms of the proposed reworks. The single greatest complaint agents have had is that their offensive skills, even when invested heavily into skill power and mods, simply didn't do enough damage. This drove most agents into the current meta of builds that put a premium on damage through gunplay. The proposed changes to skill power, according to Bruce from the live stream, will turn an average skill damage mod of 25-30%, to 30 currently in Title Update 4, into a mod producing 150% damage. That is a damage gain of 5-6 to six times more than our current mods are producing, and judging from the clips from the stream, makes it capable of one-shotting elites and named enemies with ease. Bruce did keep mentioning a skill power level of 3000, so it sounds like that is the ideal sweet spot to shoot for in our builds. In addition, he also mentioned that through all of the clips, he was not using a demolitionist specialization or gear talents like destructive. And this brings me to my last section of information for you concerning Title Update 5. For those of us that built and perfected skill builds in the original Division game, adding attributes and weapon talents that increased enemy armor damage and damage to elites to our builds was essential for delivering maximum damage on target. Now, I can confirm that the gear talent Destructive will continue on into Title Update 5 and will stack on your skill damage numbers for explosive damage. Where there is some debate is centered around hard hitting, known as DTE, or the ferocious weapon talent in Div 1, and if it will be stackable onto an agent's damage skills like Seeker Mines, etc. That will be determined as the team analyzes the raw data through the PTS, so stay tuned to my channel as I will post any new information once it becomes available. So now, I'd just like to offer up a quick summary of everything I just laid out for you in this video concerning Title Update 5. Cooldown reduction is now known as skill haste. No hard cap on skill haste, but diminishing returns will be in effect. Skill haste does not scale with skill power. Skill haste will start to appear on skill mods in varying amounts. Cooldown reductions will increase by 50% once converted to skill haste. Surge has increased from 10% to 20% and will be known as skill haste. Skill Haste mods will grant anywhere from 50 to 150% skill haste, so be on the lookout for these. Skill Damage mods will now increase damage by 5 to 6 times more than prior to Title Update 5. 
the possible sweet spot for agents should shoot for is around 3,000 skill power. And finally, destructive will be stackable onto an agent's explosive damage mods, but it is still undecided if hard hitting will as well. Also, and on a quick side note, and something that I will explore in a future video, is the fact that the Ballistic Shield will receive a major resiliency buff in Title Update 5. How much? I do not know. But from the video clips, it seems to be many times tougher than it is currently. If anything, this incredible strengthening of skill power should turn the current gunplay-centric meta on its head. I, for one, cannot wait to see the new results and embrace the strengthening of that facet of the game. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section below. Skill power, skill builds, PvE, PvP, any feeling and or concerns is fair game in the comment section. If you could take the time to rate the video with a huge thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't taken the time to pound that sub button, it would be greatly appreciated. And make sure to click on the bell icon so it will be set to receive notifications for all new content I upload to YouTube. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter and over on Twitch for all the latest gaming news. Until my next video, this has been Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.